A rotating biological contactor or RBC is a biological treatment process used in the treatment of wastewater following primary treatment. The primary treatment process means protection by removal of grit and sand and coarse material through a screening process, followed by a removal process of sediment by settling. The RBC process involves allowing the wastewater to come in contact with a biological medium in order to remove pollutants in the wastewater before discharge of the treated wastewater to the environment, usually a body of water, river, lake or ocean. A rotating biological contactor is a type of secondary biological treatment process. It consists of a series of closely spaced, parallel discs mounted on a rotating shaft which is supported just above the surface of the wastewater. Microorganisms grow on the surface of the discs where biological degradation of the wastewater pollutants takes place. Operation The rotating packs of discs known as the media are contained in a tank or trough and rotate at between 2 and 5 revolutions per minute. Commonly used plastics for the media are polyethylene, PVC and expanded polystyrene. The shaft is aligned with the flow of wastewater so that the discs rotate at right angles to the flow, with several packs usually combined to make up a treatment train. About 40% of the disc area is immersed in the wastewater. Biological growth is attached to the surface of the disc and forms a slime layer. The discs contact the wastewater with the atmospheric air for oxidation as it rotates. The rotation helps to slough off excess solids. The disc system can be staged in series to obtain nearly any detention time or degree of removal required. Since the systems are staged, the culture of the later stages can be acclimated to the slowly degraded materials. The discs consist of plastic sheets ranging from 2 to 4 meters in diameter and are up to 10 millimeters thick. Several modules may be arranged in parallel and or in series to meet the flow and treatment requirements. The discs are submerged in wastewater to about 40% of their diameter. Approximately 95% of the surface area is thus alternately submerged in waste water and then exposed to the atmosphere above the liquid. Carbonaceous substrate is removed in the initial stage of RBC. Carbon conversion may be completed in the first stage of a series of modules, with nitrification being completed after the fifth stage. Most design of RBC systems will include a minimum of four or five modules in series to obtain nitrification of wastewater. Biofilms, which are biological growths that become attached to the discs, assimilate the organic materials in the wastewater. Aeration is provided by the rotating action, which exposes the media to the air after contacting them with the wastewater, facilitating the degradation of the pollutants being removed. The degree of wastewater treatment is related to the amount of media surface area and the quality and volume of the inflowing wastewater. History. The first RBC was installed in West Germany in 1959, later it was introduced in the United States and Canada. In the United States, rotating biological contactors are used for industries producing wastewaters high in biochemical oxygen demand e.g., petroleum industry and dairy industry. A properly designed RBC produced a very high quality final effluent. However both the organic and hydraulic loading had to be addressed. In the 1980s problems were encountered in the USA prompting the Environmental Agency to commission a number of reports. These reports identified a number of issues and criticized the RBC process. 
One author suggested that since manufacturers were aware of the problem, the problems would be resolved and suggested that design engineers should specify a long life, however, this was only possible when the manufacturers became aware of the design problems and the stress to ensure a long life and since failures still occurred it was unlikely any design stresses were known. 7 Trent Water Limited, a large UK water company based in the Midlands, employed RBCs as the preferred process for their small works which amount to over 700 sites consequently, long life was essential to compliance. This issue was successfully addressed by Eric Findlay C. Eng when he was employed by 7 Trent Water Limited in the UK following a period of failure of a number of plants. As a result, the issue of short life failure became fully understood in the early 1990s when the correct process and hydraulic issues had been identified to produce a high-quality nitrified effluent. There are several other papers which address the whole issue of RBCs. Findlay also developed a system for repairing defective RBCs enabling shaft and frame life to be extended up to 30 years based on the Cranfield designed frame. Where additional capacity was required intermediate frames are used maximizing minimizing the need for duplication. Topic: <laughs> Secondary clarification. Secondary clarifiers following RBCs are identical in design to conventional humus tanks, as used downstream of trickling filters. Sludge is generally removed daily, or pumped automatically to the primary settlement tank for co-settlement. Regular sludge removal reduces the risk of anaerobic conditions from developing within the sludge, with subsequent sludge flotation due to the release of gases. Topic. See also Activated sludge Aerated lagoon Trickling filter Industrial wastewater treatment List of wastewater treatment technologies Sewage treatment